building an online business, you know, obviously you're in a very different position now. Uh, ha, you know, you, you, the path that you took, the path that I took building a business, we did it before having kids. Yeah. And that was great. I think that's probably the most ideal way that someone can um, create their life is that before they have kids, if you can create financial security, financial freedom, if you and your partner can have years building a great foundation, yes. doing the self-development, working on yourselves, create that foundation then to bring a child into this world, it will just make the experience so much easier, so much yes. better. Um, and you know, not, not just for us, the experience, but also for your kids as well, because you can be available for them, you can be present. You know, So many parents, they're not that available for their kids because they're off working and trying to pay the bills and whatnot. So the question I have for you is that if you were in a position, let's say, where you had Lucas, you had a child, mm -hmm. but you didn't yet have the success. You discovered online business. You had that drive, that hunger for it. You know, how do you think you would have gone about it? How do you think you would have um, pursued success? Would you have been able to? Would it have been a lot harder for you? Do you think you still would have become successful? You know, what do you think that would have been mm -hmm. like? Because, yeah, when you don't have kids, it's like, man, that's just so much easier. You know, it like is, you just, yes. you have the freedom, you yeah. have the time, you have the energy, yeah. um, all of that versus when you add a kid, especially a baby into your life. Now that, especially yes. for women, will preoccupy you so much. And I know there's many women out there that have kids. They have, you know, maybe they want to have kids, but they also want to create success. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a great question. And um, before I answer that, I, I will say that, like, I think it is important to plan your future to the best that you can. You know, not everything is gonna go according to plan, but without, they say, fail to plan, plan to fail. And so I think that is important. And in that plan, in my opinion, it's making sure that you delay having kids until you're at a place in your life where you've really uncovered your shadows. I'm, I'm putting the financials aside right now. I'm just talking about your own personal development because having kids is a huge responsibility. Um, because you are now raising the next generation um, of people, of adults who are going to enter society and who are either going to be contributing members of society or sociopaths, quite honestly. And a lot depends on how you raise those children. And now how you raise those children will depend on how you were raised and any shadows from your past that are unresolved. So what I would do is I would take the time that is needed to do the self development, do the reflection, to bring awareness to who I am, to really get to know oneself before embarking on the, on the journey of having children. Because if you don't heal any wounds, if you don't um, bring to you, your conscious mind any shadows uh, and resolve those shadows, then you will unconsciously bring those forth into your children yeah. you know you you will it, it's just it that's just what happens generation after generation yeah. so i think that that that's key now if i was in my 20s and i had a tr child and i had not yet created the success first of all i would recognize that yes it is going to be harder for me than it is for someone who doesn't have kids. And I think that is important to be, you know, yes, it's realistic. It's probably, there's more challenges that I'm gonna have to face that a woman of my age who doesn't have kids just doesn't have to face because they don't have that responsibility, especially with small children. When you have babies and toddlers, you know, they really need you. They really need your time. They're very demanding with your time. Um, so there's just gonna be a whole set of challenges in front of you that, you know, the other person just won't be facing. And so I think acknowledging that and saying like, yeah, that that's my reality. But am I going to let this cripple me? Am I going to let this um, prevent me from ever getting started? Am I going to let this get in the way of giving myself a chance at success? Or am, am I going to am I going to use this as my reason for success? Um, you know, I could have the story of why, you know, this is why I couldn't do it or this is why I did do it. And I think using you know, children, there's no better fire to light under your ass than having your own kids. Cause especially like as a mom, there's this, this is mama lion fire within you. Like I, I you know, when I became a, a mother, there's a part of me that was never lit before. 
Like I was always very calm and relaxed and very easygoing and you had a good time with me, right? <laughs> I was a nice chill wife. And after having Lucas, there's this, ah, there's this fire within yeah. me that like, I'm a mama bear. If anything happens to him, I will rip your throat out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I am fierce now yeah. because because he's my love, because he's my blood, but also because he's dependent on me. Yeah. And I know that he's my responsibility and I wanna do the best I can to take care of him. So he is a great motivator to creating success. Yes. And so I would use that motivation like we talked about to light that fire. But I would also recognize that yes, there's gonna be more challenges that I'm gonna be faced with and I'm gonna to have to work around them rather than using them to create my story of why I can't be successful. And that's what a lot of people do. They get caught up in their story of why they can't be successful instead of creating a story of why they will be successful. So um, what I would do is I would first figure out, okay, how, well, first of all, I think the first year of life with a child it's it's just very consuming. You know, the first six months, yeah. forget about starting a business. This is your time with baby. Focus on baby. Take care of baby. Very important for the attachment of the child. Um, you know, just forget about it. But at the point where so don't don't put the pressure on yourself at that stage. I got to build a business. I got to build a yes. business because you're gonna set yourself up for yes. failure. Like you have to recognize your body just went through so much. Hormonally, it's gonna take you time to get back. There can be postpartum challenges and you want to, you know, I think allowing your body to get back because it's already very stressed or sleep deprived, all of that. But you have to, the, the more stresses that you add on yourself, the harder it will be for your body to recover and rebound. So you kind of have to look at it long term, this pursuit of building a business and not be so short sighted that, man, I got to create my success and build my business yeah. right after the baby's born. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And so, um, take that time to just be with baby. Yeah. And if you need to make money because you don't have maternity leave, just go and get a job. Don't focus too much on building a business. Um, I think, yeah, do what you can to, to spend time with baby. And you know, and, and when too. you're with baby, this is a good time to be listening to things. Oftentimes, like I had to do a lot of contact naps, like the amount of hours that I spent on the rocking chair, my ass was numb. And you can listen to things at that time. And that's where you gather information, you get inspired, you learn about things because you have to understand that when you decide to build a business today, it's not like you can get started tomorrow. You decide to build a business and you have to now collect, okay, what business am I gonna build? What direction am I gonna go in? There's so many different ways I can build a business. There's so many different models, um, you know, what do I want to do? What am I good at? What resources do I need? Who am I going to follow? What course am I going to buy? There's a lot of information that you kind of need to collect. So you can do that, you know, the research phase, if you'd like during that time, but not take any action. You know, you're just storing your notes in, in your hard drive in your mind. Um, and then when you get to a point where you feel good, where you're emotionally, mentally, physically, you're in that place, then it's like, okay, now it's time to figure out how I can um, take some time out of the day to be working towards building my business. And so you need to figure out childcare. And I think one of the important things with childcare for me, I think is if you can have someone that the child, that's gonna be a constant in the child's life to, to be there for them. So if it's dad, if it's um, you know maybe auntie, or if it's grandma, grandpa, some a family member is a good is going to be preferential over a stranger because you know that family is going to be in their life for the rest of their life, and so um, arra making arrangements to be closer to family during those yeah. times so that you can um, so that you can you know hand off the child so that you can take an hour or two a day to to work towards your business, yeah. and and that might mean like you know moving to yeah. you know a different state if you have to because you don't realize how much you need your your mama until you have a baby <laughs> i think i think like you have to look at building a business as it's going to consume your life almost like having another child like when you start a business you're having another baby and that baby just like your actual baby is going to consume the most amount of your time energy resources during that initial phase but eventually the baby becomes more independent it can walk it can connect with other people. It doesn't need you as much as it initially does. So your business, when you do make that step and that leap in that direction, be prepared that it is going to consume you. Even if you might think, okay, you know, I'm going to spend an hour or two a day on my business. 
well, there's something called momentum. Like you're going to get into the momentum. You're going to get consumed by it. Like when we were building our businesses, it just consumed us because now you're getting emails. Now you're getting orders. Yeah. Now you've got to like, it, it's very difficult just to, um, kind of like, uh, say Shut like up. one hour or yeah. two hours because that becomes much more as we all know. Yes. So you have to be prepared for that transition to then consume you um, and require a lot of your energy and your resources. So that's why I think if you can look at it as you're gonna have to go through a stretch that might be three to five years, maybe less, maybe more, I don't know, but like you have to factor in that this is gonna be a journey that is gonna consume you. It is gonna take time for your business to get off the ground, for you to go through the learning curve, <laughs> to get it to a point where that it doesn't require your time as much, that that's something I think you have to understand. And so I think preparing for that, you know, if you wanna start a business, you don't have to start today. Maybe it's not the most ideal time today, but you can still prepare your mindset. You can prepare like, okay, when my child turns one years old, that, you know, and I can then set myself up so that that's mm -hmm. when I can really dive into it and I can go for that sprint and really, you know, dedicate mm -hmm. the time. I can set everything up in the meantime. I can work on my mindset. I can learn about business. I can learn marketing. I can listen to podcasts. I can, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do to prepare yourself for when that time comes. That's the way that I would approach yeah. it. And as you said too, maybe it's like, okay, you know what? If it is gonna be a stretch for a couple of years, okay, maybe like my family is gonna be an incredible resource that can assist me in this. And so therefore I'm gonna move close to family. You know, I'm going to make a sacrifice over the next couple of years. I'm going to move off in the suburbs to a different state, to a different country, just so that I can have my parents nearby and they can support me with the childcare, maybe with my husband or, you know, with my partner, you know, we have to work things out in a way where they're going to be more the provider for our essentials our survivor, you know, being, uh, you know, surviving and whatnot so that I can, mm -hmm. you know, dedicate my time to this or. Like you have to be strategic, I think, and plan that. And I yes. think if you do that in advance, it will set yourself up more for success rather than trying to overwhelm yourself and just be stressed and trying to do everything at the same time when it's not mm -hmm. the most ideal stage to really go full force on it. Right, right. So, I mean, it is the, the reality is that as your business becomes more successful, it will require more of your time investment. So don't think it's the opposite. You know, the beginning stages, you're going to invest the least amount of time when you don't have customers, you don't have employees. And as, as things grow, exactly, as that, things grow, the demands increase. And when the demands increase, your attention's being pulled in all these different directions. And that's why as an entrepreneur, you don't have a schedule, you know, the way an employee does where they're working eight to five and they go home and they can cook dinner with and have peace of mind. As an entrepreneur at five o'clock, you're cooking dinner and you're thinking about the emails that you need to write and the the promotions that you need to do the next day and all of these things, your mind never turns off. So be prepared for that. Yeah. Um, that's that's important. Um, and then I think also um, in terms of building the business um, as a mom, it's thinking of, oh, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing I actually find interesting about moms you know there's like a saying that if you want to get something done give, give it to, to someone busy, who's busy busy mom and it's in many cases because as parents and especially mom like you're so busy like you're used to, you eventually like adapt to like not getting much sleep mm -hmm. but in in some ways i can i can actually see like you know one thing i've often heard too about the the best ceos are often women yeah. you know because they've had kids and whatnot and like they're just kind of able to multitask so much. And there's like these abilities that I think women yes. have and they develop that can actually be very advantageous um, to, you know, building a business. Yeah. And whatnot yeah. Women have a fantastic ability to multitask. Yeah. Unlike men, men just cannot do it. Um, not in the same way that women can. And so that it really works to your advantage when you're building a business and there's just so many different things going on, but you're able to prioritize yeah. which goes first and you're able to still, you're able to do multiple things at once. And also, um, I think what's important is, is to decide what you're going to give up. So yeah. if you're going to be building a business, like Stefan said, it is very consuming. You know, it's it's your child is a priority and then your business. And there's not really any room for anything else if you really want to go all in to make it a success initially, you know, and, that, and that's what it is like to really make something a success. You really do have to go all in with it because otherwise you're just going to, 
you know, it's just never really going to take off. And so you have to decide what am I going to give up in my life? And it's temporary, right? So maybe I'm going to give up, you know, some of my social life. Um, my Audi and every Friday I hang out with my girlfriends. Maybe I'm going to give that up for a while. Or maybe I'm going to, you have to decide based on your value system, right? If your, your child is your top value and then I don't know what else, what are some things lower on your value system that is taking your time every day that you can now give up to use that time towards building your business? Because we all have 24 hours in a day, so you have to figure out how can I best leverage those 24 hours. Well, that's very difficult because I think, uh, especially after having a baby already, for example, your relationship, is taking a step back yeah. or maybe your health, you know, like it's taking a step back. So there's all those other areas in some cases that have been neglected that you also now need to recognize, okay, yes, there's baby and there's business, but then there's also the relationship. There's like, but that goes back to what mom. we're saying. Mom yeah. and dad have to be on the same page, yeah. right? You have to sit down with your partner. You have to get clear on what it is that you both want for your family. And how are you going to yeah. support each other to achieve that goal? Yes. And I think, yeah, that, that's a really important thing. You know, we see this with people that have reached out to us about, you know, one person wants to build a business but their partner's not supportive of that, mm -hmm. you know? And they think like, what are you doing wasting your time trying to build an online business? And so there could be conflict in a marriage and relationship with that, especially when um, building a business can take you away from that relationship. You know, your partner is working late hours at night instead of spending time with you. And that can be very frustrating. And I think, I think like if you are going to start a business and you are in a relationship and you have a family, you really have to enroll them in the vision of this and mm -hmm. share that same vision and be both willing to endure those sacrifices that you are going to have to make and, and, and I think creating a level of a schedule, I think is important. Like you still have to have the time with you and your partner. Um, I think like, you know, going back to what you're saying though, about maybe that first year is not the most ideal time to do it. And, but once you can prepare, okay, you know, now we at least have the help, the childcare, we've set that up. So that way, you know, I can have a stretch of hours during the day to focus on business. And then I can, you know, have that time you know, when the baby goes to bed at nighttime, then, you know, I can maybe do a little bit more work on my business or have some time with my partner. Like you have to schedule those things in because if you don't schedule it, it's probably not going to happen. It's not going to come together. So mm -hmm. it is, I think, going back to what you said, it's going to be really hard. It's going to be very challenging. And like the, the areas that I would probably first look at, like if I also like when was in a position where I was a father and hadn't yet created my success, It'd be very challenging because now I have this other area of my life called my relationship with my child that I also want to invest my time in, nurture, and then the relationship that I have with my partner. But the, the things that I would first and foremost sacrifice in my life would be all of the things that I spend time doing that just have no nutritive value. Netflix and chill. And in fact, yeah. I, like I went through I mean, a long enough stage in my life where I had no TV. Yeah. Because I remember, you know, Jim Rohn, a uh, motivational speaker, he often, you know, would say to people, um, you know, like, how much did that TV cost you? And the person would be like, oh, you know, it cost me $500. He's like, I disagree. I think that TV cost you $10,000. And the person would be like, what do you mean? Like, I paid $500 for it. It's like, that's what you paid for it. But the cost to your life is over $10,000 because the amount of time that you're spending watching it is an opportunity cost. And that instead you could spend that time making more money or focused on your business mm -hmm. or other areas of your life. And so for me, like I would look at things like that where, hey, if I'm not yet where I wanna be and I wanna create this freedom, security and this life that I want, then the areas that I'm gonna give up is these moment, the, you know, the, the ways that I escape and give myself short-term gratification. You know, I don't yet have the luxury to have a TV and sit there for a couple hours at night binge watching something if I'm not yet where I want to be. And so I would yeah. get rid of the TV and yes, it's not ideal. It's not, you know, I wouldn't want to have to go back to that, but I, those are the things that I had to do. Those are the things that you those had are... to do is we had to give up those things. Those, uh, you know, maybe an hour of sleep, two hours of sleep. You know, there was a stretch for me where I was like, I, I can't afford to sleep eight hours. You know, I, I'm not where I want to be. I'm going to sleep six hours. Every mom has already given enough enough yeah, hours of sleep for, for a lifetime. Forever. <laughs> you know, obviously, you know, sleeping less is going to have negative health 
impact on your longevity and whatnot, but the time has to come from somewhere. There's only 24 yeah. hours. So where, where are you going to take it from? And so, you don't want to take it from your relationship with your kid, your wife, your business, you know, those things that are going to provide the most ROI for your time. Mm -hmm. So instead you got to take it from things that aren't really going to move the needle much in your life. And that is maybe, you know, socializing with certain people and doing fun things. Like you still got to do that. Of mm -hmm. course, I'm not saying neglecting that completely, but Video maybe, games. You have, maybe you have a day out of the week, you know, maybe you have Sunday day off. You get to indulge, you get to watch a movie with your family, whatever, right? But you have to, you have, to, it has to come from somewhere, yeah. you know, and beggars can't be By the way, you know, a lot of people say that when they became successful, the reason why they love the success is because of who they became. Yeah. And why do you think that is? It's because on their journey to success, they had to give up a lot of that non-nutritive stuff. They had to give up the, you know, hours in front of the TV, the hours sc scrolling sh social media, the video games, all of that stuff that did not add value to them, their lives. And then their day has now been composed of all things that do add value, that are productive. And so they like who they became because now they became this person that's really moving the needle in their life. They've become a person who's very productive with their life instead of just being, you know, a couch potato all day.